In this video, I'm going to take a look at how you can avoid naming conflicts when you import the TK Inter module into your Python program. For this video, I will assume that you have viewed the previous six videos in the Python namespace playlist. Consider this Python program. It's one statement and it's going to print what is returned from the DIR function. And let's have a look at the runtime for the program. And you can see it is here. Now the entries have been put there by Python. As the programmer, I've not been responsible for any of these entries. But we have looked at some examples of what these entries mean in this playlist. Let's now consider this computer program and you can see I've just added this program statement here. And if we now have a look at what's output by this statement, we will see the following. Now, if you consider this output, you can see it has everything that was output for the previous program, i.e. this output here. But if we come back to this output, we can see we have the addition of this name here. Of course, this name is in the namespace because of this program statement here. This x is the name that's bound to the instance of the integer class that has the value of 1. Let's consider this computer program. As the programmer, I've been responsible for entering this function and this one. And here you can see I've got two assignment statements. And then we are printing what's returned from the DIR. Now the output from this computer program is shown here and the usual suspects are there with the addition of these four. And of course these four are a direct result of what I've typed in. This for example is the name of this function. This is the name of this function. This program statement here has resulted in this name x appearing in the namespace and this program statement has resulted in this y appearing in the namespace. Let's now consider this computer program. And if you look to the first line, you can see it says from TK into import and asterisk is there. And that means import everything from TK into. And this line will print what's returned from the DIR, i.e. the namespace. And in fact, it'll be the global namespace. So let's have a look at that output. Here we can see the output. And within the output, you can see there's lots of names. Let's consider some of the names in this namespace and I'm going to highlight this one here button and we know that would be used to enable us to produce a button to be placed on a window within our Python code. Let's also consider the one I'm highlighting now label and we know that this will enable us to produce a label within our Python program that we can then place onto an appropriate window. And of course, there are other names in here we should be familiar with. This one, for example, is Southeast, and that will enable us to place things within our windows appropriately. We've seen TK before, and there are many others that I could highlight. But the thing I want to stress here is all of these names have been brought into my Python program, placed in the namespace, in the global namespace, and this is a direct result of this line of code importing everything from TK into Let's now consider this computer program and you can see it's almost identical to the one we've just been looking at except I've included this line x is assigned 1. If we now consider the runtime for this computer program we can see it is here and we can look at it carefully and see it is almost identical to the one we've just been considering with the addition of this x here. Now that's there in the namespace, in the global namespace, because of this program statement here that I have entered. And of course, the name is bound to the integer object that has the value of 1. Let's now turn our attention to a computer program that will produce a graphical user interface and place a button onto that graphical user interface window. And if we consider this line, we're importing everything from TK into this will create the window. This will create an instance of a button associated with this window and that button will have the text click me on it. And this line will place the button at row zero and column zero. And of course, we have this main loop here. So when the program executes what we're going to see is this there's the button placed upon the window now let's consider this computer program and the difference between this and the one we've looked at above is I've now removed from TK into import everything and when this program executes we will receive the following output we get an error and of course this bit of the output here 
gives us an idea of what the error is and it's saying TK is not defined. So when I attempted to use TK here, it said, well, I don't know what it is. And the reason it doesn't know what it is, is I've removed this from this program. So we haven't imported everything from TK into. In fact, for this program, we haven't imported anything from TK into. So the program complains saying, I've no idea what TK is. If the code was allowed to run on further, it would say it didn't know what this grid was or what this main loop was and so on. Anyhow, let's now return to the program that we know works. And when this program executes, we know we're going to get this output here, the button on the window. Of course, this program works because what this line has done, it is imported into the global namespace everything associated with TK Inter. So our program here will know what's in that namespace and it'll know that this will allow it to create a window and this here will allow it to create an instance of a button, that this line will position that button appropriately, and then it'll go into the main loop. Now, all of that is possible. All of this code will work because of this line of code here, importing all of the names into the namespace. Now, let's say as a computer programmer, I wasn't 100% sure as to what was in TK Inter. So I decide to write a class, and here you can see I've created a class. So I've amended the program above just by putting in this in so I'm defining a class that I've decided to call button now when this computer program executes what we will see is the following we get an error now the reason we get an error is this class that I've defined as a programmer will be put into the global namespace that already has in the global namespace a name button which has been imported from the TK into module now the problem with this is Python now has to make a decision which one of of these names is it going to use? Is it going to use this name or is it going to use the one that's in TK Inter? Well, it decides to go with this one here, the one that is part of the class that as a programmer, I am going to be writing. And we have what's called a name conflict, a naming conflict. Now, if we consider what the error is here, it says button takes no arguments. And that's because on this line, it is attempting to use this class and if you look at this class, there's no bracket here, no parameters are being passed to it. But if you look here, this is expecting to see my window and text. And if you come down here, it says button takes no arguments. What it means is, is that this class takes no arguments because Python has decided that it is this class that this is attempting to use here. And why am I passing it arguments? Because it hasn't got any arguments in its definition to receive. Of course, as a programmer, I could look at this and realize what's happened and say, well, I'll change the name of this class. I'll change it to my button or some other appropriate name. Of course, this in truth is not a very good solution because in reality, I wouldn't have called this button if I'd have known there was a button in the TK Inter module. I have gone ahead with this because I've not realized what's in this module. So using this statement to bring everything into the namespace risks me as a programmer choosing inappropriate names and getting naming conflicts. Of course, when you're dealing with small snippets of code like this, it might not seem much of a problem having this naming clash. But when you're producing very large systems with lots of lines of code, this can cause major headaches because it becomes very difficult to realize what's going on because the detail might be hidden within this overwhelming number of lines of code that you've got. And you're looking at this going to Friday afternoon, you're a little tired and you're thinking, this has worked before. Why is this not working? And it becomes a complete pain to find the bug sometimes. So it is better to go to some software engineering practice to avoid clashes happening. So let's take a look at this program again, the one that's got the name clash. And we know when this runs, we're going to get a runtime error that I'm showing here. I've just took a snippet of that runtime error. And you can see it says the button takes no arguments because the program is expecting to create an instance of this class, not the one that was imported from TK Inter. 
So to avoid clashes occurring, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this line here that I've used for all of my videos so far on TK Inter, simply because I knew I was only writing snippets of code and I was highly unlikely to have a naming clash, as you can see in this example. And if we have a look at how that program has been changed, let's consider this listing here. And this is the line that I've changed. You can see this says import TK into as TK and look at this one here where you can see that was saying from TK into import everything. Now what's happened on this line, TK into will be imported so I can use it, but it will have to be referenced by TK. Now there's nothing particularly special about TK, but of course it reminds me I'm dealing with TK Inter. TK seems a good enough approximation to TK Inter. I could put Fred Bloggs if I wanted there, of course I wouldn't. But what this line has done, it has stopped everything being imported into the namespace as this line did that allowed for naming clashes to occur. Now, if you decide to go with this line, what you have to do when you create an instance of a window as shown on this line, you have to put the TK and this full stop in front of this here. Because if you consider this line here, you can see that a window was created by just assigning to it this TK with the two brackets. Now that appears here, but note in front, it's got TK and the full stop. Look at this line here in the previous program, and you can see that that is creating an instance of the button class. Of course, it crashed because it was getting confused. Whereas if we come to this line, you can see I'm creating an instance of the button that belongs to the TK inter module because I've prefixed it with this TK full stop. Consequently, when this program executes, what's going to happen? We're going to have no problems. It produces the button on the window. Of course, if in my code I wish to create an instance of this class, then I would have a variable name being assigned this name here with an appropriate set of brackets, and I would have an instance of this class created. In other words, there wouldn't be a clash. I would want to create an instance of a TK inter button using this, and to create an instance of this class, I wouldn't put the TK in front of it. So let's summarize. Here's a computer program that will put a button onto a form, and we can see we've used this method of importing from TK inter. But when this program runs, we're going to get the button on the form. Now the alternative program is shown here, and when this runs, it'll give us exactly the same output. It'll give us the button on the form. The difference being with this program, you've had to use the TK full stop in these two places. Of course, you may conclude that using this program means you have the pain of typing this every time you want to use something from TK inter. Well, it's three keystrokes, my reaction is get over it. What you're doing using this approach is using something that will avoid name clashes occurring. And that's much better because when you get bugs coming from name clashes, if you're particularly tired, you find yourself spending hours wondering why your code isn't working. And it's because in truth, you've not really understood namespaces. Because what we're really doing here is saying, think about what happens to the namespaces in your programs. I could have simply got rid of all the videos I've just done on namespaces. This is the seventh one in the series and simply said, look, I've been using this so far because my code's been short. Don't use it. Use this one instead and give you it factually. But I think it's important you understand why it's a good idea to do this rather than this here. Now, what do I use? Well, to be honest, I use this one when I'm writing proper systems. If I'm just mucking about, I sometimes find myself just using this because I know I'm only going to have a small segment of code. But from now on in the playlist, I'll be using this here and I'll be putting these prefixes every time I need to use something from TK Inter. Before I finish this video, just consider this computer program and you can see it's using from TK Inter import everything. And then I'm going to print what's returned from the DIR function and it should show us the namespace, which we can see here. And you can see all of the names that have been imported from TK Inter. Let's now edit this program and change the first line of the code to what you can see here. 
Now it's saying import TK into as TK. And of course, this line is the same as the previous program we've just looked at, and it's going to print the namespace. And you can see that is here. And it doesn't import all of the names that exist in TK into. What it does have within the namespace is this. And of course, we now have to use this name every time we wish to reference anything from TK into. So if I wanted to create a button, it would be TK full stop button. And we would put the appropriate parameters in to enable us to create an instance of a button. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.